We're about halfway through this total master bath remodel where we completely demolished the wet area, including removing and replacing the tub and going back with a new layout. To bring you up to date on where we are and how we got here, you can check the first video that involved the tear out of the shower by clicking on the link in the corner. That will show you how the new floor was installed. In this video, we'll prep the walls and talk through the layout process for installing the new tile. What makes this a little different is that the lines for our tile stretch across both the tub and the shower walls. So we need to take into consideration where the tile starts and what reference lines we're going to be using to make all this turn out right. By taking a little time to think about this and plan for the layout of the tile, a lot of headaches can be avoided during the actual installation of the tile. I use a lot of this product which is called Hardy Backer in one half inch thicknesses in showers and tub areas. It's very much like the old style concrete walls we used to float in when I was first learning this trade. I don't put a waterproofing membrane on the top of this because I actually prefer to have the surface of the Hardy Backer available to soak up any water that one day may find its way through a crack in a grout joint. The way I cut it is a bit dusty, but as long as I have a mask and earplugs on, I kind of enjoy getting covered in a layer of dust about once a week. It's a good idea to pre-drill holes in the Hardy Backer before installing the screws. The main reason I do this is because it's possible to crack the Hardy Backer with the screws if you get too close to the edge of it. It only takes a few minutes longer to pre-drill holes, so it's well worth the time to me. Now I said I don't use waterproofing membrane on the Hardy Backer surface, but I don't mind and in fact it's probably a good idea to use it on the corners and at joints. Here I've also built in a niche for shampoo and soap bottles, so since that penetrates into the wall, I use the waterproofing membrane to seal that very well. Here's the product that I typically use. There are a number of other manufacturers of brush-on membranes, and I found all the ones that I use to be a good quality. Now's the time to figure out the layout for the tile installation, which is a 9 inch by 12 inch porcelain tile. The first thing is I don't really have to worry about this area in the bigger picture because its layout is going to be pretty much independent from the rest of the tile installation. I have a line that I've picked here that corresponds to the top of one full tile being placed on the deck of the tub. That line also works out to give me good cuts down at the floor level of the shower. So I use that line to run a continuous row of tile around the tub and shower. The only cuts needed are around the tub. When it comes to making cuts, I take my time and try to make them as precise as I can. Doing that not only makes the job look nicer, but makes for a simple job when it comes to caulking the joints. By using these spacers that have a beveled edge on them, I can adjust the tile to line up right on the line. Then the joints that are left at the tub and tub deck corners are ideal for running a bead of caulk to finish this up after grouting. As I continue setting tile on the line and work my way around the shower, I hold the tile in place until the thin set dries by running a couple of screws just into the surface of the hardy backer to keep the tile in position. I continue filling in the tile below my line down to the shower floor in the same way using screws and spacers to keep the tile in place. One thing to note about my process is that the hardy backer and wall tile extend out over the floor and floor tile. In fact, you can see that the floor just under the wall is actually sloping back towards the drain. The whole purpose behind this type of design is to ensure that water does not get behind the tile and stay there, where it creates conditions where mold can grow. By keeping these corners sealed up with caulk and maintaining them periodically, this type of design will last a long time. I still have this decorative liner and a lot of bullnose trim to run, and one of the things I'm trying to control with this layout is the location of the grout joints. Since I'm setting this tile in a brick pattern, I would like the bullnose and the liner joints to also mirror the brick pattern look. I'll address that more in a minute. The liner is a decorative piece of tile that is installed by adding thin set and pressing it in place. I use the same spacers to give me about an eighth of an inch grout joint. I get a question occasionally about why I'm adding thin set to the back of the tile and not directly to the hardy backer. It takes longer to do it the way that I'm doing it, but here's my rationale. The main goal when setting tile is to get as close to 100% coverage of thin set between the tile and the surface it's stuck to. Spreading the back of the tile with thin set assures that for the tile. If I pull a tile periodically, I can see if I need to adjust the amount of thin set on the tile to get complete coverage on the hardy backer too. That's the simple explanation. Going a little bit further, first, I'm not in that big of a hurry anymore, and second, thin set placed directly on the hardy backer dries out really quickly. 
So if you get delayed at all in your setting process, you're going to need to back butter your tile anyway before you set it. The rest of the process is a repeat of what has been done below with the exception that now I'm stacking the tile and only have to worry about my spacers between the tiles and no more about holding the tile in place. Gravity does that work now. One of the benefits of doing the brick pattern is that you can cheat a little if you need to on the placement of the tile. Because the corners of the pieces of tiles are not lining up with each other, this pattern is a little easier to set than stack tile. Now my bulldoze pieces are 12 inches long and the height of my wall tile is 9 inches, so in order to make my grout joint staggered, I may have to trim the pieces of my bullnose in a few places. The simplest way to figure this out is just to try a few variations of positioning the bullnose and then go from there. This may seem like a little overkill, but it's the kind of attention to detail that can make the difference between an okay looking job and a great looking job. Bullnose trim is a great option for giving a finished look to any tile installation. If you don't happen to have bullnose available for your tile, you can still get a nice looking finish by using a process that I call back cutting the edge of the tile. You need a tile saw to be able to do this very efficiently, but I'm linking a video in the corner that shows this type of installation. Before I can finish out the step and niche for the shower, I have three pieces of quartz that I need that are being fabricated and are the same material, just a thinner version of what we used on the tub deck. I cut templates for the fabricators and dropped them off at their shop a few days ago. So once those are in place, I can make the remaining tile cuts that are needed to finish out the shower. I will show that to you in the next video where I'll install 18 inch tile on the floor and run it in a diagonal and stacked brick pattern. That should be interesting. Check out other videos on this project. I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. There's always something going on around Dobbs Workshop. So thanks for watching.